Hi, I'm Vance Friedenberg, and I'm going to show you how to measure and weigh a live amphibian. We're going to use today as our example species the red-bellied newt. Notice. And these guys occur here in California and throughout the West Coast. Beautiful, beautiful animal in the family Salamandridae. Uh, we use these spring scales. So the first thing you need to do when you do this is know that you hang it when you're weighing something. So you hold it from the top, not from the side, because you could get a wrong weight if you did that. You also need to make sure that it's zeroed. So the way you do that is you hold it like that and make sure that it's actually, the little line is on the zero. So you, you turn this thing up here to figure that out. Um, then that's ready to go. I put my little guy, I'm gonna put him in the bag, gently. Make sure he's towards the bottom. And then I'm gonna put the scale on the top using that clamp. And now I want to hold the scale very carefully and let it equilibrate. So there, it's right at about 10 grams, but of course we've got to subtract the weight of the bag. So now I can let him out. It's always good to weigh the bag after you weigh the animal in case you get any debris in there with it. Be very careful to not hurt his tail. And the bag weighs, looks like about three grams. So it's a seven gram animal. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my calipers to measure the length of the animal. And same, same thing goes for this. You need to make sure it's zeroed. So you move it all the way closed. And this is really nice because if you get it wet, it still works. Um, and notice that it's a little bit off right here when I close it all the way. So I need to readjust, slide this part here until I get it to the zero exactly, okay? Now this can be challenging with some species like salamanders because they wiggle around a lot, but really we're looking for a general measurement. It's not going to be perfect, but it gives us an idea of whether it's a juvenile, adult, etc. What we're going to do is we're going to take two measurements with our calipers. And remember, these are just rough estimates of the length of the body from the tip of the nose to the cloaca, and then from the end of the cloaca to the end of the tail. So a snout to vent length and a tail length. That's what we, we record for this guy. It's a live animal, so he's squirreling around a lot. Now what I'm going to show you is where the cloaca is on this animal, which is right here. It's also called the vent. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little opening right there. See it opening up a little bit? And we're going to measure to the back end of that. And then we're going to try to take another measurement from the back end of that to the end of the tail. Okay, so that would be our tail length and our snout the vent length. Now this guy wants to be a little bit curled up because he doesn't like being held upside down. So here we go, snout length to vent length, right about there. And the measurement for this guy is 68.6 for snout to vent. All right, now I'm gonna try a tail. Now whenever you're handling salamanders, you have to be careful with their tails because some species, not this one so much, but some species are able to break off their tail on purpose as a way to avoid predators. Now this guy is gonna be really tough on the tail length. Now I go from the back end of the vent to what I believe will be the tip of the tail. Now that's pretty rough estimate as you can see. Right about there. Now I'm left-handed, so I don't get to see the dial until I flip it over. And his tail is 70.6 millimeters long. I'm gonna get a snout to vent length and a weight estimate for this Wyoming toad. Get my toad here, here he is, a very happy toad. Let's see if you can see what he looks like. All right, so snout to vent lengths in, in urines or frogs and toads are easier taken on the top of the animal, on the dorsal side. So here he is, I kind of stretch him out a little bit, let him sort of pull himself forward with his front legs. And I'm holding his back legs, but not very hard. They're just the pins, so he can't have any purchase. And right here is the vent. Can you see that right there? 
So they have a cloaca right here. You can see kind of this fold of skin. And that's what I'm measuring to, to get an estimate of the total body length of this animal. I go right to the tip. But there it is right there. So this guy is 56.1 millimeters long, snout to vent length. All right, now the next thing I'm gonna do is get a body weight for this guy. And the way I do that is I am going to put him in his in a little bag, like this. Drop him in gently. Make sure that his fingers and toes are not near the area where I'm putting this little clip. And this is a scale, a spring scale, that is too small for this guy. So notice it's gone p past 30 grams. Um, so I need a different scale to get the right weight for this guy. I've changed scales, so now I have the 60 gram scale. I'm going to clip it onto the bag. Make sure I don't clip the animal. And I let it hang. Now you want to make sure and hold it by the top and not like this, because if you're doing this, you're not going to get the right weight. If it's windy outside, put the wind to your back and kind of block it like that. Okay, as best you can. So this guy, I'm looking at the scale right here. It's looking like 37 grams is the bag weight plus the animal weight. Now what I'm going to do is get our bag weight and we can subtract that and get the actual weight. All right, guy, we're done with you. You can go back home. Now we just weigh the empty bag. which is about three grams. Great, there we have it.